welcome to Smart. But where's Kirsten going? Kirst, the show's starting. I know that. I'm gathering together materials for my first picture. Look, the bin makes a brilliant rubbing, doesn't it? What are you doing that for? Ah, I'll come over here. I'll show you. I've been getting rubbings from everywhere. And you'd be surprised at what works well. That basketball, for instance, makes that dotty rubbing. And on a flip-flop, you can get two rubbings, one on either side. But check out that makes that lovely pattern, the sole there. Nice. Does that, which is cool. So I'm just going to rub now on this bit of coffee cup holder that I've found. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's use a nice red. Ooh. Oh, it's got a watery effect, doesn't it? Well, I think, because of the colours I'm using, it actually looks like flames. And I've had a bit of an idea for an indoor picture that I could do using my indoor stuff. You've got a bit of wood there. Why don't you try an outdoor picture, see what you can come up with? Yeah. Oh, actually, I think I know what that knot in the wood lends itself perfectly mm. for, yeah. These lines along here are a good fireplace. I'm going to do the columns, cut them out. Let's do two of those. <laughs> oh, that looks nice. Yeah, it's getting and there, it's getting there. That's that, I need those bits. This is a lovely pattern. And what I'm going to do with this is do a flower. I just think it looks quite petally. Hey, Kirst, look yeah. at this. Look, sunset. Oh, man. I've used that in the wood. The eye. Yeah. Well, yeah, oh, I see. Good at it. I'm just going to repeat that now down here. Let's just cut this flower out. I think I'm ready to start arranging all my stuff now, Mark. It's fun, isn't it? This is good. little flower, yeah. OK. I need a background. Groovy, funky wallpaper. Why is it heavy? Should you make a collage? Yeah, using nice. all the different rubbings. Let's have that bit across there. That bit across. Like that as a bit of a mantelpiece. The rubbing I did, flames. Oh, I see. Actually, you know the flip-flop rubbing that I showed you? Yes. The bottom look looks like logs. Lovely. All I've got to do is stick all of these down now. Lovely. What are you do... doing? Ah, oh, look, you'll see in a minute. Here we go. So well done, Kirst, on a boat in silhouette with a sunset and its reflection. <gasps> All from that block of wood? Yeah, just give it a frame. Oh, well, I've just got to get my green and put a little stalk on my flower there. And I think I need a frame. There oh, we have it. Yes, an indoor picture, an outdoor picture. And look at that one I did using indoor rubbings. And oh, I made, yeah, an outdoor picture. And check out that wacky bird. I made that from leaf rubbings from all the leaves outside. In fact, the great outdoors can give you real inspiration for arty ideas, can't it? It certainly can. Ah! Ah, Mark, you can't step on that square. It's got the stone on it. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Well, what do you call that, then? Oh, uh, you know, Kirst, that looks a bit like your head shape. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You're just trying to cheat. No, no, really, honestly. You know what? It's giving me a smart idea. Oi, just cos I'm winning? <laughs> oh, Mark, that's actually really good. How did you do that? Well, I just looked at the shape of the stone, you see, and I thought, it looks like a face, and then you've got two little sockets there for the eyes and one for the mouth. Not only that, this is a great one. I haven't painted it yet, but see, look, if you look very closely here, you can see it looks like a T Rex. You've got the upper jaw there, the lower jaw. Let's it's have great, a go isn't it? At this. Yeah. Ah, look, the shape of it can be a kind of whale with the oh, eye loaded. There's an eye there as well. And even a fin. Gums, a little bit of white for his teeth. Looks pretty 
Tschüss. Right, Mark, why don't you have a look at that, see what you can do on there? All right, and you have a look at that one. OK. This one really does look like you, Kirsten. That's what I love. I don't know, I'll show you when I'm finished. Ah, oh, big wet doggy nose. You know what, Kirst? I only like your whale. Ah, oh, thanks. I love your face. Really? Not <laughs> that one, the stone one. Oh, yes. Hey, which one was it that looks like me? Oh, that one. Um, <laughs> it's this. Spitting image, don't you think? It's a gorilla. I know. Sunrise, sunrise, looks like morning in your eyes. But the clock's held 9.15 for hours. Sunrise, sunrise, couldn't tempt us if it tried. <laughs> One, two, three, uh. your idea because this is the view ordinarily from my bedroom window but I've jazzed it up slightly by getting a piece of acetate and drawing a picture onto it and sticking it on the glass so now I have that lovely window box view which is great and I quite fancied having a go at drawing the view from my bedroom window and if I'd drawn it before the 16th century it would have looked like this picture here very very flat this is the Bayo tapestry and it's not very 3D at all but in the 16th century they discovered how to do perspective and so in this picture here, this was during the Renaissance as it became known, you can see the picture stands out now, it's a lot more 3D and all of the lines seem to be disappearing to one point in the distance which is known as the vanishing point which is the key to doing perspective. So going back to the view from my window, the first thing I've done is drawn the house that I can see in the foreground because that's the biggest thing in my picture. The other thing about perspective is things get smaller and smaller the further away they get. So what I did was found my horizon line on the picture which you can see is just a little way down and drew that line onto my picture here and then all I did was all of the corners I just followed along with my ruler drawing them into the distance to the horizon line and eventually you'll notice they all meet up at the same point on the horizon line which is here which is my vanishing point. So now all I need to do is carry on everything. So let's do the second house in. Let's get the window, so that would go like that, there to there. 
down like that. And if you just keep moving your ruler along all of those points, following the lines, you can't really go too far wrong. You'd keep that going all the way along until you've got to some point in the future like this, which I've now done in pen. And all I'm going to do is, you'll notice in my original picture, there's trees, so I've left some gaps because there's a big tree sort of goes along there like that. Let's get that like that. Uh, there's a tree back here that needs to go into my picture. Uh, where else we've got? Oh, we've got one popping out over here. And at the front, there's a bit of tree action going on there. The next thing to do is to paint all of that. I've started painting mine and I'm just going to add the detail. So let's start. I think we'll do some dark green and just sort of dapple in here like that. Get some nice detail on the go. And in fact, paint all of this tree in a nice dark colour. So now all I'm doing is adding the shading and the final touches to the perspective. There we go. Nice messy green. And that bit goes in there. Let's get a bit dappling under there. Nice white dappling over here, I think. And you can see I've achieved the perfect view from my window. I think it needs a frame. And there you have it, the view from my window with perfect perspective. Next. Now, what can I do for you today? Well, my clouds seem to look like sheep more than clouds. And my road doesn't seem to go over the head. Ah, I have just the cure for you. OK. Observe. Just simply drag this blue pastel across the paper. And what I'm doing now is leaving gaps. And those gaps are going to be your clouds. Because the trick is, is not to draw the clouds, but to draw the space around them. It's a very simple, yet effective technique. And there you have a lovely summer sky. Thank you, Dr. Speet. Now, for the road. We'll start off by drawing the hill in the foreground and the hill in the distance. Now you put your road down on the first hill and the second part of the road, you actually move slightly to the one side and narrow it as it goes into the distance. There, that should sort out your little ailment. Now, is there anything else? Uh, yes, there's a feel like an apple. Well, we'll have to get to the core of that. <laughs> Core! <laughs> That's very good, Mark. Very good. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh. <clears throat> Next! When you're planning on painting a lovely, picturesque scene, there are a few things you can think about which might make your picture come out better. The actual framing of the scene makes a big difference. Too much sky doesn't look right, nor does too much land, and it's a good idea to have a bit of interest in the foreground. This is nice, but I think I could find better. Think about colours too. You could try and match the natural colours here, or go for a more abstract look. Now, that's what I call a good view. So, for framing, I'm going to take up about the top third with the sky and mountains, then the middle third with the lakes, and for foreground, I could use all this foliage and bushes. I've just got to get my paints out now. Oh, look, and there's even this bench I can work at. Oh, there's my tea. Oh, no. Oh, I don't believe it. I've come all this way and I've forgotten my paint. 
Oh, but I have got this black paint. Maybe I could just do a big black and white picture. Hmm. And what about this string? Maybe I could do something interesting with this. Let's see. I think that's going to work for getting the shape of the bush, but I really need to define those thirds, so I think I'm going to get a big piece of string and lay down the line of the lake. Really messy, sticky fingers now with the glue. Now, for those shrubs around this corner of my picture, I've got a bit of a plan. I thought I could roll the string up into kind of loops like that. Maybe it's all just in my mind. Maybe I'm foolish. Maybe it's just. Oh. <laughs> Hello. That's it. Now, I know it doesn't look much at the moment, but I've got to wait for all that glue to dry before I can put the black acrylic on, so I reckon it's time for a cup of tea. put quite a lot of glue onto the string so that hopefully the paint will sit on top it won't soak in and I'll get a good strong print let's see shall we right moment of truth That's worked really well. But I think it's a bit stark. It definitely needs some shading now. <laughs> we want that. There we go. <laughs> Finished. You see, I've managed to turn my earlier art disaster into a brilliant print with a difference. I think we've got landscapes just about sewn up and talking of landscapes here's some of your work and Becky has done her landscape in all one colour but she's used different shades to give it depth. Yes and from one cool landscape to another now Nathaniel's very cleverly dabbed on the watercolour to give this tree a very realistic effect. I love this waterfall the water's so soothing. Sam's picture here looks a little bit like a Monet. Now, Stephanie's snowy watercolour is subtle, but it works really well. Hey, look, Alicia's got the hang of perspective. Big horse in the foreground, tiny ones by the tree. Now, Eve's nighttime cityscape looks great, and I love all the illuminated windows. Every picture we show in our gallery gets the smart sketchbook and the smart pencil set. Yep, sadly we can't return any of your work but keep it coming in because we love looking at it. The address will be shown at the end of the show so get your pen and paper ready. Now it looks like more fancies dipping his toe in the water. I wonder if he'll get Chaz in there. <laughs> Hello. 
Serves you right, Morph. You never can be too careful when you're swimming. Now, check this out. Look, I've done a perfectly round beach ball using a roll of sticky tape as a template. Because it's very difficult trying to draw perfectly round objects. So I've taken this idea one stage further. I'm going to draw planets. Now, let's get a roll of sticky tape there. Get me chalking. I'll just go around the edge. That's it. What you want to do now is actually just smudge away all the outside edge. Just take that away, look. So you start getting this eclipse. The sun's just bursting through behind the moon. Looks lovely. I'm taking this idea again, I'm going to get a bigger roll of sticky tape now and just get a bit of white using the inside of the roll. I'm going to put a bit of white down random scribbles and a bit of blue. Now what I want to try and do now is create the effect this planet is sort of three-dimensional so I'm going to try and put it in half shadow. So let me just blend those colours in together first. Now I get a bit of white on top of there. Look at that, you see you've got the moon in half shadow there and then do a little starburst here, look. A blob of white chalk. Again, just kick away the chalk with your finger. Just finish it off with another little bit in the middle to make it look really bright. Just drag a moon across, here we go, just a... There's your moon surface. A few little stars, get your nail. Scrape away the chalk from the top. Look at that, you've got a galaxy starting to happen here. And then just finish it off with a frame. Lovely. And look, here's some more ideas. Different planets using the same technique. Right. What are you doing? Could you just sprinkle that for me, please, with the poster pen? Yeah. Oh, nice blue. Jump. Jump. Okay, ready? Go. One, two, three, go! Wait! <laughs> 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 
I've thought of something that'll be a brilliant finishing Go touch on. for What's this. That? Ah. Glitter. <laughs> Glitter. Time to remove the stencils. Right? Yeah. Oh, nice one, Kirst. Thank you very much, Mark. You know what? I think this show's been out of this world. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, Kirst, <laughs> Mars be going. What? Yeah, I've got to be on my Milky Way. Oh, Mark, you're such a space cadet. <gasps> Bye! Bye! Don't forget, you can send your pictures to us here at Smart. P.O. Box 5053, London W12 6AW. Fact sheets for today's show can be found on the website, bbc.co.uk slash cbbc. For the best in art, stick with Smart. <laughs> <laughs>